Hey guys, this is Dorian from Eternal Games and in this video I'm going to show you how to UV your characters for games and I'm going to go ahead and texture the character Gabriel for UV the character Gabriel so first let's discuss the uh, meaning of UV in the general so the UV is basically the same as your model laid out in a 2D um, uh, you know to the world so basically we cut open the model and lay it down in a 2d um, platform so we can apply textures to it some you have to do if you want to texture a character and for Gabriel here I'm going to use a single UV uh, UV tile which is this uh, plus some of the body parts is going to be mirrored after they were um, packed which means some of the UV parts are going to be overlapping which means the two thighs and two shins and basically the whole arms and legs are going to be mirrored and they're going to have the same UV tile and the textures are going to be exactly identical so let's get started with the UV and I'm going to use the UV layout um, plugin for this, which you don't have to use. You can use uh, Maya itself, but um, I mean, uh, you kind of have to use UV layout uh, eventually because Maya is great in a lot of different uh, types of modeling, but the UV part of Maya it just sucks. You're gonna have to find something better if you don't like uv layout you can find plenty of uh, plugins that you can use but uv layout works uh, really good and uh, a lot of the professionals are using uv layout so if i were you i'll get mine after you install, install uv layout let's uh, pick the biggest part and send it run uv layout new and send so there are a few shortcuts that you need to know first to start the UVing process we're gonna have to cut some of the edges so we can use those cuts to spread this model open to spread it out spread it out and to do that you need to press C for example if I want to cut this line I'm just going to have to hover the mouse cursor over it and press C and it's going to cut right through it. Now the cut still uh, isn't applied, it's just uh, kind of marked in a specific place because first I want to um, make all my cuts then start, start uh, separating them. And I'm trying to use the um, kind of the edges that I know have they have to be cut uh, for example if you cut from here then uh, there's gonna be when we uh, flex these UV shells they're gonna have to they're gonna have problems but uh, I think you will understand that better when we get to that so try to cut the shape open and at the same time try to be mindful of trying to hide your uh, cut seams because you need to keep in mind that every place of the model that you have a cut the patterns and the uh, kind of the uh, form of the texture there is going to be cut from this piece and which means if i have a dirt kind of a pattern on top of my texture uh, you know the pattern is gonna go uh, the same way it goes in every place and when it comes to a UV cut it's gonna be cut from there and the other side is not gonna really uh, go along with that but I, I think it's kind of difficult to explain that before texturing you just try to pick the best places to try to have the least amount of UV shells as possible because you don't want to cut all the edges then it's just going to be a nightmare to UV and texture 
So, something like that. And if you press W, is uh, the shortcut for weld, which means the reversing of the cut. If you don't want to cut someplace, you can weld it back. But you know, this is too much. Let's do this. No, this is better. So. This is kind of a boring part of the process, but in the end, you have this is something you have to do, and you should keep in mind that if you want to have a good character, you need good textures, and if you want good textures, you need to have good UVs. So it's not something; it's not exactly optional. You have to go through it, and you have to be patient and try to get the cleanest textures as you can get because it's really important for the quality, overall quality of the model. And try to cut down the try to cut the UVs from the places that um, for example if I cut it from here that's not really necessary but if I don't cut it from here you can't really spread this part out because it's kind of pulled out from the center and if you imagine this made out of um, maybe cardboard or paper or something then you can understand that there's some specific parts that has to be cut in order for the texture to in order for the UV to not be stretched out or pushed together but like I said you can understand that much much better and easier when has it has a texture and in a minute I'm going to flex these uh, UV texture, UV shells out and it's going to be pretty obvious if, they're, um, if they are stretched out or not. Okay. Okay, now so just uh, let's start applying the cuts and taking them apart. So once you have a cut in place, just hover over the uh, UV shell with your mouse cursor and press enter. It's going to cut it off and separate it. This is the UV obviously, it's not the actual mesh. It's not cutting the mesh, it's cutting the UVs. So let's spread them apart. And I kind of try to keep the least amount of cuts. So if there's actually any problem in the um, kind of flattening them, then you can go ahead and um, 
fix any problems that you might have but overdoing the cuts not gonna do any good so try to keep the least amount of UV shells as possible and if you needed any more cuts you can always come back to this place or cut them actually on the UV part of the display which I'm gonna show you in a minute Okay, so let's all right. It might be confusing if you're just starting out, but trust me, it's not a very complicated thing to do UVs. It's actually one of the uh, easiest part of the process. It just might be confusing if you're just new if you're new to this and once you're done cutting the model just uh, hover the mouse over it and press D to drop them in the UV palette or just pr press D aside and just click and drag so all of them get into that and if you go to display and press on UVs now we have the UVs here there's a cut here that hasn't been applied. Let's see. Okay. And to flex the UV shells, you just have to put the mouse on them and press and hold F for flex. And it's going to spread them, force spread them open. By the way, UV layout is fairly easy to use. So you can basically basically get into it and use it with the shortcuts that I'm teaching you now. You don't need a lot of different things, but you can find tutorials for it on YouTube. Anytime you need. But it's fairly simple to use. Um, kind of the rotating and the moving of the parts is with uh, the spacebar if you press and press and hold spacebar and the middle mouse button you can move them if you're using the uh, spacebar and left mouse button you can rotate them and the right mouse button to scale them but you shouldn't scale them not now at least So I'm just pressing down the F button to flex the UV shells really quickly. I'm trying to kind of rotate them in a way that they're gonna at least one part of them is gonna align with uh, one of the actual um, X or Y directions because that's going to make the quality of your UV map a lot better and it's going to make it a lot faster so the UV layout will not have to rotate the UV shells to find the best fit for them or even at least even if uh, it does have to rotate them you don't have to use 5 degree or 10 degree angles you can just use 90 degree and um, then you're gonna save a lot of time because the packing actually takes a lot of time if it's complicated so these red parts they mean that the UV in these parts are being stretched honestly this isn't that bad we can uh, we don't have to do something about it but if you wanted to get rid of it you just have to cut this apart and flex it separately then that is going to fix the problem but technically because this is uh, such a uv uh, low poly uv um, we're going to have to make peace with the fact that there has to be some sort of stretching at some parts we can't get rid of all of it and that's fine because it's not going to have any a visible uh, bad effect on the texture we can live with this definitely but just to show you I'm gonna cut them open Let me 
like so. And again, I'm using spacebar and lift mouse button to rotate UV shells or UV islands. Both names for these uh, smart cutoff pieces of UVs. Like so. Do the same here. Use C to cut, enter to separate the cut part, and move them apart so we can see what we have. By the way, you don't have to do these cuts on the UV part. You can go back to the 3D part and you can still uh, weld or cut the UVs from this place so you can understand exactly where they are. But this is fine for now. Like so. So now that we're done, UVing this uh, specific body part, I'm going to pack it but in a fast way so we can have something to import into Maya. I'm gonna press send and if I get back to Maya, let's check it out in the UV editing. Okay, so this is the UV shell right now. If I turn on the checker pattern. We can see now that the all these squares are perfect squares. They're not squished or uh, text. They're uh, they're not squished or stretched out, which means the UVs are going to work. The cuts are not too close. They're not too um, too many of them, and I try to hide them in the uh, kind of the pushed-in corners of the model because. Well, I'm gonna use a lot of uh, dirt for the textures on these characters because they're robots and they're kind of like old, dirty robots, worn out robots. So they're gonna have a lot of dirt, and the dirt are going to dirt is going to cover all these seams that uh, is gonna make them invisible in the texture. So let me go ahead and um, UV the rest of the character. I'm gonna show you the result at the end. And then we're going to try to pack the textures as best as we can. Okay guys, now that I'm done unwrapping all the, all the um, UVs, um, because I want the legs and the arms to be mirrored, which means that I want the UVs in the hands and the arm and the legs to overlap, I'm going to delete everything that I want to be mirrored before I pack the UVs which means they're gonna have identical UVs and you shouldn't do this if you want the for example if you want the two legs to have different types of textures like different types of dirt and um, different types of patterns on them you shouldn't do this because uh, doing this means that in the you in the texturing process you cannot use different types of textures for each of the each of the legs because they're going to be mirrored and they're going to have the same exact UV shells. Okay, so this is it. And let me show you what I have here. So that this is a whole lot of mess, which is not important right now. So I'm, I want to show you that the checker pattern is exactly um, 
right which means if each of these um, the squares were kind of pulled in any direction which it means that your UVs are not ready if you want to turn this on and off there's just there's a button right here and because they're so evenly distributed and the same size for each one of them which it, this is this is uh, kind of the look you should be going for this is just right so let's um let's get to the packing the next level after the unfolding of the uv tiles uv uh, shells is the packing of the uv shells so this uh, character for me is um pr it's a pretty important character in the game but it's not the main character so that's why i wanted to have a single uv tile but if you <coughs> If you want to have a really high quality character, you like the high quality renders, like if, you, if this is a portfolio piece, you're going to have to go at least six or seven UV tiles. And the way to do that is like um, you have to kind of separate the model to six different pieces. For example, these could be one UV shell, UV tile. Um, the arm could be one UV tile, the torso could be at least two UV tiles, the head should be one, the eye should be one. But like I said, this is going to be a game ready character and game ready character cannot have six or seven UV tiles. See, uh, maybe for commercial games, but commercial AAA games could have... Uh, characters with even more number of movie tiles but for an indie game one is perfectly fine and because I'm mirroring the arms and the legs I'm actually saving a whole lot of pixel density which means uh, a single UV tile is gonna give me more than enough quality in my textures and because of the nature of my game because this is a side scroller platformer the distance of the character from the camera is something like this and um, if you're uh, working on a, maybe a third person game which the camera is closer up closer to the character or the character is a first person game that mean uh, which means the camera can move around and get close to other surfaces and other characters then you should probably go for two or three UV tiles, but like I said, for me, one is going to be more than enough because I'm overlapping some of the UVs. So, and uh, by the way, you could do this, you could do the packing part of the uh, UVs in Maya if you want. And if you're dead set on using Maya, I'm sure you can find plenty of uh, tutorials on YouTube on how to UV and pack your textures in Maya. But like I said, I'm not going to be using Maya, I'm going to use the UV layout plugin. And before I do, I'm going to select everything here and go into UV shell and select all of my UV shells. And I'm going to go into... This is the uh, UV toolkit, by the way. You can access it in the UV editing. In the UV uh, toolkit, I'm going to open up Transform and I'm going to come down to the Texel Density. Your map size should be 4096, which is the uh, size for a 4K map. And if you are using a single UV tile like me, you have to go 4K uh, resolution. You can't go anything under that. Uh, in the texturing part uh, the texture size is going to be the same so I'm going to give it a number I have 50 here which is probably fine and I'm going to press set and it's going to make all these uh, UV tiles UV shells to 50 texture density which is really low but uh, that's not important right now because I wanted to have I want all the pieces to have the same texture density before I send them into the UV layout. So let's select the parts again, run UV layout, and this time I'm going to press on edit because I, I have the UVs, I just want to edit them. 
and send okay here's the model if I hadn't um, set a specific texel density for all of them this were gonna this was gonna be uh, all kinds of a mess this was gonna be partly blue partly red because they were gonna have different pixel densities and, and that was gonna just um, make the kind of the packing part the, to last a little longer so I'm gonna open up the pack tab here I'm going to go quality I'm, I'm gonna leave the quality of fast bump the map resolution to 4k turn off rotate uh, you have to have the shrink boxes to fit checked and the don't resize shells unchecked this is the two important parts and i'm going to press pack so what this is going to do this is going to resize all the uv shells to fit the square in a way that they're going to get the most possible texel density which is uh, what you need actually and after this is done uh, it's gonna be it's probably gonna be uh, good to go, but we're gonna check to be just to be sure. But usually, because I have a lot of tiny pieces, this usually works pretty well. Okay, this is fine. And if you wanna have more quality, you could bump this up to middle quality and you should but you should remember this is gonna make it um, take a much longer time to pack your uvs and this is fine for me and if you go to uv shells and pick one of them and press get this is going to show you the exact um, texel density that your uh, model has and if you notice they all have kind of the same texel density they're pretty close they're practically the same number and that's exactly what you need so let's go to classic mode again so this character is now almost ready but now you I'm now I'm gonna show you why we mirrored why we deleted parts of that we're gonna be mirrored so let's get back into the UV editing so for example this cylinder this is the UVs for the cylinder and if I now go ahead and let's double click to open up this mirror tab turn off the cut geometry and combine with original and press mirror you'll notice that the UVs for each one of these uh, guys are exactly overlapping which means that they both get the same amount of pixel density instead of each getting some um, so and that helps with the spacing of the UV tile which means they're gonna be more space open in the UV tile and that's gonna result with getting more pixel density for example if I had the arms and the legs both in the scene when I was when I was packing this was going to be a way low, lower lump, number this was not going to be this high which means lower quality so you're basically what you're doing is you're sacrificing a little bit of texture to get more quality to get more resolution and i'm going to do the same for all of the parts that i want mirrored like so if you press G you're gonna repeat the last function that you've done which for me was the mirror okay.
By the way, the unfolding of the character took me for about um, an hours of work. It might take longer for you if you're just starting out, but once you get a hang of it, it's a pretty quick pipeline. It's not something you should worry about. It's pretty boring, but like I said before, it's necessary to do. And with what I did, everything is now mirrored and the UVs are overlapping and I have more texture density to work with, which means better quality for my textures. The eyes and the ears. Okay. So now this character is ready to be modified for texture and the rigging. See you in the next video.